Welcome to Winning in the Margins with Jeff and Jamie. And we're excited to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. Jeff, how are you doing today, man? All right, man. I'm Jam and Jamie. And how are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. I'm excited to dive into our topic today, um, talking about failure and challenge. And I'm always fascinated with these two with these two components and how you establish those within an organization. Um, because if you don't tackle those things right within an organization, you can't be great. Um, and I think oftentimes we sort of try to push around and move around those things. Right on. Yeah, I, I, I believe they're one and the same. They're a yin and a yang. You don't you don't win without both. So I'd say I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation. What, what what's what's a failure you've had that at the time you didn't you didn't know how valuable it was going to be down the road. And now, you know. You know, I mean, so much of it is about failure. Um, you know, my dad was a borderline Olympian, so he taught us from a young age failure. Uh, you know, I mean, a large part of our upbringing, you know, my brother works for the Boston Celtics. I've been our division one coach for a long time. A big part of everything we did growing up was about failure. I mean, my, my father, we'd play one on one and he would beat us 32 to two, 32 to four, 32 to six. And, you know, my mom didn't seem to understand it at the time. I mean, you think about it, you got two young boys outside. You've got a grown man out there. He's an elite level athlete. At this time, he's still able to dunk a basketball and, you know, can he was running like a, a sub 11, uh, 100 yard dash. So he was as elite an athlete as you can get for a father at that time. Yeah. Um, and I don't think she fully understood, you know, him blocking our shots and, and how hard he was playing out there. But, I, you know, when I look back on it, I've, I look back at those times so much about failure. And he was really teaching us how to handle failure and how to raise to a standard. Um, you know, there weren't a lot of fouls called and, you know, it wasn't, it, it was a, it was a tough, it was a tough game. I wouldn't say it was easy by any stretch. Um, awesome. But when I look back, I, I think that's one of the biggest failures was, you know, he pushed us every time we stepped out there and didn't let up on us uh, until we were able to, to kind of rise to the challenge. And it really built, you know, some, some mental toughness and some physical toughness in my brother and I. Uh, I, I love where you went there. You know, what you described describes growth. Growth requires understanding. Understanding requires humility. And humility requires character development very much like that or an event that just demands it because you fall so flat on your face that you have to understand, hey, I got to learn something. I'm yeah. always good enough to give my best, but I have opportunity to learn to develop. And until we learn to develop in the way that you described, failure becomes you instead of becoming part of your course to growth. You will love that. You know, that's, that's a, that's rich. Failure becomes you. If you don't, if you don't learn to accept it and, and move past it, that's really, that's really rich. You know, he would always say this at the end of beating us, he would say, keep practicing. He would throw the ball back to us and say, keep practicing. And, um, and he, and he would, you know, he, he's a elite level uh, athlete. So that's like a thing, you know, he had a mindset about it and we would stay out there and practice. I mean, we'd stay out there for another hour. It's not, we lost, went in the house. We'd stay in there an hour. My brother and I, if it was two on one, would start strategizing about how we're going to win the next time and, and all these different things. So, you know, again, so much of it is, is having the right, I think honestly having the right kind of mentor to right show on. us how to handle failure. Now your, your, your father loved you very much, but he beat you 32 to six, 34 <laughs> to six. And folks would look at that as why don't you let them win? And that's exactly what he was doing when you understand that. When, when we're taught that we're going to be let, let to, or enabled to do something, that's a great word, enabled to do something instead of earning what we want to do, it's just two different ball games. And the way, you, the way your dad taught you, you, you know, organically, you said your bro, you and your brother strategized. Was that organic or did your father guide Hey boys, why don't you stay out here? Figure out a plan. Come up with how did that? How did that come about? Yeah, you know, I actually I was working on a document, like what you know when your when your parent is in is in sport at elite level sport, the way they teach you is different. You know, you know, like most parents, I'm with a bunch of parents now. They're like giving their kids everything. Um, but when you're when your parent is an elite level athlete, 
they make you want it. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's it's so different. They make you come towards it. They make you ask questions and, you know, they don't force it on you. So he didn't give us, you know, he didn't ask us to strategize. Um, we just sort of had to figure that out along the way. Um, right on. How you, you know, it, it was always like, how can you win the game? How can we figure out how to win? Um, now, now, why was that important? Why was winning important? What did, what did that mean and yeah. why was winning important? I mean, you know, whether, you know, again, you're looking at the example, you know, my father is playing anything. Could it be cards? Could it be pool? Yeah. I mean, he, he, he exhibited the will to want to win. You know, you know, don't even sign up if you're not going to compete and win. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, for us, it's the only thing we really knew was like, how can you find a way to win the game? And a right large on. part of our you know, large part of our upbringing in sport, especially was you got to figure out how to win. And it doesn't matter how you win, but you got to figure it out. And, you know, it, it's interesting. You know, you talk about failure and what it was able to do is like it, now I would label that as a failure. But I really kind of reframed that my entire life to. Just I had to learn how to do it. So the character and, was being developed on the job all the time, and and I feel like the very best do that. Yeah, you know, they they they, they make you they make you define yourself. You know, we hear these stories about Bill Parcells and and these great head coaches, Phil Jackson. They make the player come to them with the information, having worked through it, instead of giving them everything at their feet. You know, one of the things when you watch the NBA right now we have so many young players in the NBA and every organization is giving these athletes everything at their feet instead of having them figure it out and kind of learn it. And I think there's a learning opportunity that's missed. There's a leadership opportunity that pushes you into greatness because you've got to have the ability to figure it out. And when you, when you say you're, when you say the NBA has given them all the tools, there's your entitlement. When you have someone within, within, let's say that within the rookie class that takes it on with the mindset of a Kobe Bryant or a Michael Jordan, they're not going to see the t same tools as, as, as the bunch. They're going to see an opportunity to find the challenge. So they're going to look for who's the current Kobe Bryant, who's the current Michael Jordan and look to close that gap. And that's what your dad did with you guys growing up. Yeah. He he was Kobe Bryant. You were you were the young up and coming rookie, and you had to close that gap. And when we're not taught that type of development, the separation is wide in comparison. And I'm not even talking about the names we know, yeah. but in comparison from you to the ability that you could have, it's it's, yeah. it's absolutely absurd. My my daughter, uh, very much like your father. In, in, in the way that in the way that we have competitions, you know, we've played the punch buggy game since your little girl. And I'm talking fierce, fierce to the point when my mom's riding with us, when my mom's riding, she'll get <laughs> she'll get upset because a punch buggy comes into play. And it's, ah, we're, we're you know, one of us is getting the other. Um, but we've done that with Connect Four. We've done that with Uno. I'm, I'm going way back now. Yeah. Um, you know, r games like Rummy. Uh, we play this game every single morning. Uh, called Rubik's Race, and we've played it for I believe the last four years. It's a uh, Rubik's cube, but it's it's on a board where it, you have a you have a, um, a a set of code. I'll call them codes, where it gives you the different colors that you need to line up, and then we go to work on lining them up. And I've never let her win in anything until she earned it. From yeah. no matter what age she was, if she was going to win, she was going to earn it. And that game, Rubik's Race, she beats me almost every single time. Now, we'll play – we play a two out of three is one point. We keep playing, but it turns to three out of five. Whoever wins three out of five is another point. And if the opposite, if she wins two out of three, I win three out of five, we go to a championship game. So we have a face-off yeah. type of deal. And, man, she probably beats me 90% of the time. She had to earn that. First game she ever beat me in that she earned was Connect Four. And there's just a different process to that. You're learning, you're learning that failure isn't bad. Yeah. You know, we're not learning that we are a failure. We're learning, we're learning to make progress. We're learning to close the gap. And so when I look at my positives and negatives as me being positive or me being negative, as compared to 
both, you know, a negative times a negative is a positive, right? Yeah. I'm turning a negative and I multiply it by another negative. I'm, 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 I'm coming up a notch. And, uh, and that's the difference. You know, I, I love the way your, your dad raised you. Are you, are you working with your, your sons like that now? Yeah, absolutely. I know you got one, you got one little man, but you're t- 10 years old, right? Yeah, I've ten got a ten-year-old and a five-month-old. Five, um, your ten-year-old, you are you taking what your what your pop and, and I'm, mom? I'm treating my five, I'm treating my five-month-old the same way. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, tell me, tell me how you're doing that with a five-month-old right now. Well, you know, just challenging him. I mean, I think you can learn a lot. Number one, I'm amazed at at having a, a chance to be present with my child every single day and watching him, um, watching him grow every single day. You know, so like he's trying to crawl right now. And so when you're crawling, you're going to fall sometimes. I'm actually working on something about crawling yeah. um, that I think is a, that could be a good carryover. Maybe we'll cover that some other time. But you, know, you talk about crawling and people think it's, people think you go from crawling to walking right and, on. and it just, you just, you forget how challenging a process it is. I mean, the first part of the process is getting up on all fours and sort of looking around and you're processing how you can do it. You've got a great idea, but you might not know how to carry it out yet. And so you can see him sitting there being like, I want to move. I'm ready to go and attack this thing, but I don't know how to do it yet. Right. Yeah. And so what happens, you know, mom or dad gets on the floor. You start moving the arms, trying to teach them how to move a little bit. And so over time, they start to process that. Then the next phase is sort of like this, like little butt scoot, you know, where they're kind of scooting and trying to pull both arms up and drag both legs Right. And so that's a part of it. Then, you know, at some point in there, they start rolling. Right. And, on. Then, and, you know, they start rolling when they start rolling over. It's scary at the beginning. Right. So they're scared. They're going to bang their head. Now, one thing I don't do when he bangs, I don't run over and pick him up. You know, I yeah. want him to know yeah. that he's OK. Right. And, and that he, he's all right. So yeah. I don't run over there. I just encourage him to get back up. And, you know, so then that next part goes, he starts rolling over all the time and starts laughing while he's rolling over. Right. So. There's a point in any process when we're trying to build into something where you start enjoying the work. Right. It was right. scary at first. Now you enjoy the work and that's the rolling part of it. And now you're bringing humor to others. You know, now from there, you kind of get your balance a little bit. Um, and then, you know, he's not fully crawling yet, but, you know, yesterday he's moving backwards. Right. right? Yeah. So, you know, and, and so you think you're moving forward, but you're really moving backwards but others around you can see the progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's just, I, yeah. I just think there's a lot of neat things that go on through learning. And so, you know, again, my point, working like my father is encouraging, not overhelping, you know, encouraging to get up and, and trying to see how he's able to respond and and then being there, you know, like I don't catch him, but I pick him up when he when he needs to be picked up and, um, and just trying to encourage him. So, you know, I think there's a lot of components there where, uh, you know, I think you hit on something that I don't want to miss. You know, I think it's about having an earner spirit. Oh, that's uh, sure. You know, that's I, sure. I mean, and it, and I would say this to our team, and I don't think our team understood it last year. You know, I'm like, we got to have an earner spirit. You know, it's really right. easy to, that. yeah, it's really easy to feel like um, you deserve a lot of things. You know, I mean, men's basketball players or athletes, I mean, you know, and there's a level of responsibility by the organization to make sure you have certain things but you own your spirit. And I always want to have a hustler's or earner spirit, you know, like a hustler is like a person that, you know, sees what's needed in the environment and figures out how to get it and how to make the environment work for them. And that's what you want to be as a competitor. You know, that's what you want to be. You want to have that earner spirit, that hustler spirit. And I think we've got to, we've got to encourage that kind of, that kind of mindset amongst our, amongst our, our children, our family, our teams. I think that's really important. That, that earner spirit fires me up. I stole that from you, number one. But what, what is a tool without an earner spirit? It's empty. It's incapable. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, and that's, that's the part that we're trying to lead our audience is to knowing that without your full effort, without everything you have and without believing that you're meant to give everything you have to own your story. Yeah. And your exact story being why your everything is needed. And when you and, and, and when you don't have an earner spirit, wow, wow, is it different? You have an earner spirit, your final four. You have an earner spirit, your sweet 16, when you're not supposed to be, 
when yeah. you're not power five. You know, you think about this, like if God gave you a hammer, whose responsibility is it to take that hammer and figure out what to do with it? Yeah. Right. I you know, and every through Christ who strengthens me. Right. And everyone has a hammer. Everyone has a tool. You know, I might be in the wrong area for this tool. So is it, is it, is it the world and is the world's responsibility to bring what's needed to me? Or is it my responsibility to take my hammer or my screwdriver and go find the right environment where that's most valued? And, and, and that's what we are. You're, whether you're a hammer, whether you're a screwdriver, whether you're a wrench, you're a tool, you're a yeah. gift that's meant to shine and a, and, a, and a gift that's meant to shine as an earner spirit. Or you dissolve your gift. You take your gift away from the world. And my goodness, Jamie, you fired me up with that earner spirit. That's yeah, it. It, it, it. You know, we, we talked a lot about it with our group last year. You know, we're at a great university. And you know, for the pills out there, don't know I'm a, I'm a fired head coach at you know, 10 years as Division One head coach. And always attack the game a little bit differently. Always attack the game with a, trying to figure things out. And, you know, we're at this great university in Washington, D.C. And it really was like, what, we, what what kind of spirit do we need to, do we need to have to be at the highest level here? And it's really easy to feel privileged. I mean, in some ways, we all want to feel privileged. I mean, you know, we we look at you know we had the Queen passed away in, in England, you know, a, a few months ago, and everybody in sort of wants to be the King and the Queen. And I'm always like so curious about that because I think so much of it is wanting to earn what I have, and and not and but all of us sort of want to be privileged. We sort of want things at our feet given to us easily, and I think you got to really try to fight against that because having things given to you takes away from your ability to grow and become the very best that you want to become and to live a life where you're most satisfied. Yeah, you you talk about the king and queen, and I and I believe that's what in large part us humans look at champions as wanting their celebration, but we don't understand that the process is where all the joy comes from. And so you take a king and a queen, if that king and queen is full, they're working hard. If that king and queen is full, they're leading their people and leadership takes a significant amount of earner spirit. Yeah. And, that's, and that's the part that I know, I, I, I know we're, we're aligned with this, that we want our audience to grasp is when, when we're bored, when we're looking, when we're looking for that steak dinner before we earn that steak dinner, it will always be empty. We'll always be full and bloated and miserable. But when we're earning that steak dinner, the energy will come along with it. One doesn't yeah. come without the other, though. If we're just fed, we'll never the, the, the tools and the prestige and the, will never, ever fill us. We'll live an empty life. Yeah. You know, I always say, you know, I probably said this to you the first time we, we spoke. I was like, teach me something. Yeah. You know, I, you know I, like I, I always wanted someone to teach me how to fish. You yeah. know, don't give me the fish. Teach me how to do it. Right um, on. Right on. I feel like there's so much more that I can learn from that process. And then I can figure out maybe there's a better way to do it. Maybe I can maybe I can dive into it better. But, you know, teach me. Teach me something. And and so we talked about, you know, again, we talk about like fa failure and challenge and and all these things. And so much of it is just your mindset of what happens when you have a setback. Um, and there, there is an understanding to it. There, there was a, there was a good period of my life where I didn't understand how to have an earner spirit. I, you know, I read books. I, I mean, way better. Bo Jackson, um, uh, Jake, the snake, I think his last name was Stapleton. I'm going back to when I was eight, nine, 10 years old right now. And, um, I wanted to be a champion. I followed, I followed the folks that were doing it, right? Or who I thought were doing it. But what I was watching was their touchdown celebration. And yeah. there's a difference between the touchdown celebration, the cutting down of the nets in the final four, and what that moment really is. And that moment is an earner spirit. And so you talk about teach me to fish. To describe what an earner spirit looks like on a basketball court. So as a coach with your players, help bring an audience member that doesn't understand. They, they want it. Like they want to be a champion, but the earner spirit, they can hear it. They can feel it. They're ah, but then there's a gap. Can you fill yeah. that gap for us? Well, every day, every day waking up, 
it's like I'm on this journey to be the very best I can be. And to be the, be the very best that you can be, you, ha- you first recognize that not every day is going to be the same. You don't anticipate the day going perfectly. You anticipate possible things that can, that can happen that you've got to be able to work through. And, uh, you know, I think so many times when you start building on a plan, you know, we see it as, as like this trajectory where everything goes perfectly. It goes perfect every single day. And when you have an earner spirit, you know, you're waking up and you're saying, you know, you know, let's say you're, let's say you were, you were tossing papers, right? I feel like that's a, that's a job that people used to have, right? And you're, you're doing papers and well, it's raining out today. So it's going to take a little bit longer. Maybe it's snowing out. So you've got to put something on the tire so you can get there. Our earner spirit is living without an excuse, uh, right? It's knowing that every day that I get up, I've got a job to do and I've got to find a way to get it done. And the job doesn't have to look like it did the day before. I mean, most times it won't. You know, it's having enough pride in what you're doing to build a system in place that 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 has some agility, where when things don't go perfect, you can still adjust and pivot and and still get the job done. Um, you know, I think having that earner spirit is recognizing that every day I'm going to show up mentally and physically ready to go having to do whatever I can to be, to be ready to go and attack whatever the challenge is. You know, our listeners are going to have all sorts of challenges out there. Um, some of them will understand, some of them we won't, won't understand. But just know that when you show up at that door or at work that day, wherever it is, you've got to have the mindset to go and be the best and to do what's required and to do so without, without, without making excuses. So to me, that's part of the earner spirit. And then within all that, it's like this passion to figure it out. Um, and, and, you know, and, and to figure it out, I think Jeff, what's important to understand figuring out isn't doing it on your own. Figuring it out is knowing who I need to ask questions to. It's knowing what I need to read. It's knowing how much rest I need to have. It's knowing what I need to eat the night before. It's all these things that go into your ability to figure it out. So you're in the right mindset and the right kind of place to go and do those things. Um, you know, this shouldn't be a, you know, when you're in the, on this pathway to be a, you know, so many earners, you know, our hustlers, they're working alongside other people in making deals along the way to be successful. It's not, you're, it's, you're not working in solitaire. You're working amongst others to get a, get a task accomplished. So I think when I, I think it encompasses all those things that I just spoke about there. Uh, it, it, that, uh, that's a great journey there. And, and in order to do all of that, we've got to understand that we are a champion. There's a champion that exists within us that's worth asking the question, that's worth pivoting, that's worth making the adjustment. And when and, 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 and our audience needs to understand that the difference between a champion is they're willing to miss 100 shots. They just don't look at that missed shot. They look at the opportunity. And the, the, the ability and the capability and inside of their mind, they know that there's somebody special. What, is, what do I mean by special? Somebody that can make the shot. Somebody that not only can, that is going to make the shot. And it's the progress is inevitable. And so we've got to wake up, right? And, and talk, um, talking about a mindset to be the best. A mindset to be the best has to understand that you are the best and your best is desired. If you look back at the wall right behind me, a world where we are on fire to give our best. And in order to be on fire to give our best, we have to understand that that very person that just spilled the milk, that just ripped, that, that just ripped their clothes on accident or, or woke up, broke their shoe or whatever the case may be, that got a flat tire, that had a flat tire for the fourth day in a row and is late for the fourth day in a row, is still a champion. And that champion is able to make pivots. That champion is able to make adjustments. That champion is going to continue to learn. They're worth reaching out to whoever to ask the question to learn more. And man, it's it's uh it's a it's a gap in the understanding. You hear so many people, and you've been around basketball for years, base baseball, you're a baseball player, probably sitting in the dugout, whether this is in hindsight or or it's just known. You have what 13, 14 people in the dugout on a on a high school high school team. I don't know what college is, but you're gonna have somebody that's ready to go to bat. And you probably had somebody on their team that was ready for you to go to bat and was glad that you were up to bat. 
rather than them being the one in the moment. The only difference is the belief. Be the one that wants the bat in your hands and knows that you're capable of swinging the bat, connecting with the ball. And that takes understanding that God brought a champion into this world. You are one. Yeah, I, w- I would I would sum it all up and you got to be willing to put the work in to fight for you. Put the work in to fight for you and know you're worth fighting for. Absolutely. Thank you for joining Jeff and Jamian on Winning in the Margins.